Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. As always, if you've got questions, comments, concerns, feel free to contact us anytime. If you have not yet joined Lanessa Farm's TAC Box on Facebook, we advise that you do so. It's got tons of individuals from all over the world that raise sheep and goats. We have experts on there that show animals. We have experts on there that breed animals. If you have questions, it is a fantastic place to ask your questions and get answers from lots and lots of people instead of just getting answers from me. Um, these are the people that I go to to get some of my answers, so I hope you'll join me in doing so. Plus, it's free, so you can't beat it. You know, when it comes to learning things about taking care of animals, it can be confusing. And as you progress through time, you're going to learn new tips and tricks and all kinds of things that are going to make your life a lot easier. You may have already experienced this where you watch a video online or you read an article where it says, this is what you need to do. And then you find out, you know, that doesn't really work for me. Or maybe I find a better way to do things that suits my needs a little bit better. And that's okay. Being fluid, being open-minded, having an open mind about the way that you do things is very, very important. Imagine for a moment if you did everything the exact same way that you did when you very first started raising animals. Or imagine if you raised your kids the exact same way that you raised them when they were very first born. Um, you know, things change and change is good. As long as you're getting good, valuable information and it works for you, I am all about it. We change a lot here on Lanessa Farms. When I reflect back on some of the videos that we've made over the years, we do things differently now than we did back then. And so I wanna take some time to start talking to you about some of the major changes that we've had occur um, and some of the major updates that we've had occur over the past few years that will benefit you greatly because they've benefited us greatly. So without further delay, I wanna start talking about the changes that we've made in our worming process and I wanna get started right now. So I have three medications right in front of me. One of them, this is copper sulfate. This is valbazin, and this is Dectamax. All three of these can be purchased without a prescription. All three of these can be purchased online. If you go down to the description below, you're gonna see exactly where you can get these. Now, obviously copper sulfate is not a medication at and of itself. However, you can turn this into an extremely safe, effective and powerful wormer to use on your farm for both sheep and goats. And I know what you're thinking. You're saying, Tim, that's copper and copper is bad juju for sheep. That it is, my friend, but copper sulfate is very, very safe. It's been demonstrated time and time again in university studies. Many universities and many major producers are using copper sulfate wormer for their sheep and goats at this very day. And we are one of them and it works great. So. I would say this is something that you're gonna to wanna to check out if you are not already checking it out. If you don't know how to make copper sulfate warmer at home, you're gonna to wanna to go to our link right here where I show you how to do that. It is highly effective and it is highly cost effective as well, which you're going to love. So, Fomancha scale. If any of you have been doing any research over the years about warming, you surely have ran across the Fomancha scale where it gives you this nice little card that has lots of different colors on it and it tells you to check the eyelid and depending on what color the eyelid is, depends on if you need to worm the animal or not. We used to follow the Fomancha scale and we do not anymore. And I wanna tell you why. Go there with me mentally for a moment if you will. If I use the Fomancha scale and I check my animal, chances are at some point in time, they're going to fall somewhere between having no worm load whatsoever and having a mild to moderate worm load. And according to the Fomancha scale, I'm supposed to just let that go. I'm not supposed to worm them. If my child uh, went to the doctor and the doctor said, Tim, uh, your kid's got worms, um, but the good news is, is it's not that bad. Um, and the medication to take care of the worms is you know, kind of hard on them. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna leave the worms in there for the time being. And you know, if it starts to get worse, we'll worry about it then. Um, I probably would not be too happy about that. 
and rightly so when it comes to your sheep and goats i know a lot of you are experiencing the same thing you're like i don't want to leave any worms in them um and while not leaving any is maybe not necessarily realistic uh, we don't want to leave a potential worm load in the animal because in the end eventually it will come back to bite you in the rear end and the reason is this a very small parasite load can turn into a very large parasite load in a very short period of time. You can have an animal that gets stressed out because it gets sick. It can have uh, you know, exposure to really hot temperatures or really cold temperatures, or you wean them, or fill in the blank. And what you're going to see happen in a very short order of time is they are going to go from a very low worm load to a very high worm load, and then you are going to run into a world of trouble. You are going to find that animal down, sick, with signs and symptoms like bottle jaw, um, and then it's very hard to worm them. So this is the way that we have changed, okay? So when our animals get to weaning, when it's our goat kids or our lambs get to weaning. One day prior to weaning, we wean at six weeks. One day prior to weaning, I dose that animal with one dose of Dectamax. This is a clear wormer. It is injectable, and that's not a mistake. Clear wormers are the ones that we think of in the ivermectin family that do things like take care of barber pole worms, and these are normally given in an oral drench. I am not a fan of the oral drench any more than I have to be because it's very difficult to know that you're getting the exact dose in the animal. And this is especially important with our little ones. So I am a fan of Dectamax. I recommend that you use it. It is injectable. If you need dosages for any of this, go on our website, www.lenessafarms.com. Check it out. Go to the download section. We have more downloads on it, medical administration work and other things than you could shake a stick at. It's all there for you and it's all free. So check that out. So again, one day prior to weaning, we give them their shot of Dectamax. I will say this, if you have to err on the side of caution as far as dosages are concerned, let's say you go to do the dosage and based on the weight, you fall somewhere between three quarters of an ml and one ml, I always want you to round up. It is better to give a little bit too much than not enough, okay? One week later, after the Dectamax, we are going to follow up with an oral drench of Valbazin. Now, Valbazin is one of the most famous white wormers that we can get. We call it a white wormer because it's white. The other white wormer that you can use is Panicker or Safeguard. Um, and this takes care of white wormers take care of something that clear wormers do not, and that is tapeworms. Now, we don't worry about tapeworms too much in our adults because as they age, they start to develop kind of a natural immunity against tapeworms. So it's pretty rare to find a tapeworm infestation in a late adolescent or even adult. So this is being used right off the bat with our little ones, but we suspect later on down the road, we shouldn't have to use it too often again. So one week apart, day before weaning, seven days later, we're gonna follow up with Valbazin. This is gonna take care of our barber's pole worm. This is also going to take care of barber's pole worm to clear up anything that this didn't get. And this is also going to treat them for tapeworms. After you do that, from that point forward, I want you doing all of your maintenance dosing with your copper sulfate wormer. This stuff is fantastic for so many reasons, and if I had to pick one of them, it would be this. The worms do not get resistant to copper sulfate wormer. So the benefit of this is anytime you check that animal and they're not where you think they need to be in regard to worming, hit them with this and it should take care of it. Now, there are a few caveats. Uh, one thing that we get asked on this is how often can I use it? Uh, University studies have shown you can use this safely and effectively as often as every two weeks, although you're not gonna have to do that, okay? So, the problem that a lot of you run into, you have not yet caught up on this program of the initial dosing and the maintenance dosing. If you're starting from scratch, if this is brand new for you and you're just now getting involved in this, even if you have an adult, I want you to run the seven day cycle of the Dectamax and the Valbazin get them where they need to be, and then follow up with this. I don't want anyone starting brand new with the copper sulfate. 
The reason for that is, is copper sulfate is extremely powerful and extremely potent, and it can cause worming shock in animals that have a very high worm load. If you don't know about worming shock, you need to figure that out uh, before you move forward, and you can see a video on worming shock located right here. So again, if you're just getting started, same process. This is our maintenance. This is what we want to use to get started. If you have an individual that for some reason uh, you've done this and then you followed up with this and then you go out one day and they are just all messed up and they're down, maybe they got bottle jaw, you check the eyelids and the eyelids are white, you're pretty sure they've got a heavy worm load. Again, I want you to start over. Start over with the Dectamax and the Valbazin, go to the copper warmer after that. Do not, I repeat, do not use copper sulfate warmer on an individual animal that is very, very sick or one that has never had it before uh, until you hit them initially with these. These are much more gentle on the system and it's going to cause them to lose those worms in a lot more gentle process than this. This is just gonna clean them out. Um, I have actually seen animals die of warming shock when they were really, really sick and they got hit with copper sulfate warmer. So. Again, you've been forewarned. Valbazin, side effects of valbazin that you need to watch for. You need to watch for the valbazin in your pregnant ewes and does, especially in the first trimester. This has been known to cause birth defects and possible abortion, although I've never seen it actually cause abortion. Uh, I have seen some questionable birth defects uh, caused from it. Your Dectamax, Dectamax, um, it is used off-label for sheep and goats. Um, I believe you can give it subcutaneously. We give it IM, um, and it's approximately one milliliter per 100 pounds of body weight. But again, you can see all the dosages that you need to go to lanessafarms.com, go to downloads, and download to your heart's content. So this is our new worming process that we use. We haven't completely flushed the Famancha scale out of the way. Um, we are still effectively checking the eyelids, checking them for pallor, but as far as leaving worm loads in our animals, we don't see the need to do that. Um, and that's where the copper sulfate warmer comes into hand and really, really helps us out. This is a huge change from even what we were doing two years ago. Um, and to be quite honest with you, until I read the university study from the University of Kentucky showing the effectiveness of the copper sulfate warmer, I had never even tried it. Um, one other question that comes up really quick about the copper sulfate warmer is individuals say, um, does this copper count as the copper that my goat needs? And the answer to that is no. This is poorly digested copper. Um, if you want to give supplemental copper, you're still gonna have to give it in the feed or in uh, the copper boluses. This is not an effective way to treat copper deficiencies in your goats. And good thing for that, other, if it was easily absorbable, we wouldn't be able to give it to our sheep. So with that being said, I've given you a lot to think about. Hopefully you find this helpful. I am Tim from Lanessa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again, and we look forward to seeing you again next time.